a big topic and a lot of you have been asking to learn about this and to hear about this. It's about your vagus nerve. And so if you're interested in learning about the vagus nerve, this is gonna be a really fascinating live. I think you're going to really like it. I learned a lot, hopefully you're gonna learn a lot. And I'm going to be writing a blog and putting everything that I've shared with you here and more on that blog. And hopefully that will be launched in the next one to two weeks. And so stay tuned for that. And during this video, if you have any questions or thoughts, let me know, share it with a comment, send us a DM, and we'll all make sure to answer all of those questions at the end of this video. Or if it doesn't get done during the live, then don't worry, we'll make sure to reply. I have an amazing team of helpers that helps me to answer questions. So you may see Brooke and you may see Haley. And then of course I get on there and answer questions all the time too. But we're here to support you and we're here to serve you. And this topic was a topic that you guys requested. And so you asked, we're delivering. And so if there are any other topics that you'd love to learn about related to mental health, brain health, anxiety, depression, bipolar, simply let us know and we'll make sure to add that into our docket. And so again, this is Dr. Nicole. Today we're going to be talking all about the vagus nerve. And in order to get access to the blog, you'll go into the link in the bio and then there's a button that says blog and I'll make sure that we get that posted in under two weeks. I'm still working on finishing it up and then that will be there for you. We'll also save this video so that you can watch it and then of course send questions and comments and I will make sure to do everything I can to answer it. So let's get started. Your vagus nerve. Oh, Sean is here. Sean, you did request this topic. I'm so glad you're here for this live. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is exciting. The vagus nerve is an amazing nerve. It starts in your brain stem and it's called your 10th cranial nerve. And the name vagus is actually wandering in Latin. It means to wander. And we named it the vagus nerve because of the wandering path that it takes as it goes down your body. And the vagus nerve, it starts in your brainstem and then it goes all over the place. It goes to your larynx, it goes to your heart, your vagus nerve goes to your lungs, your organs, all the way down your spine and out into your organs. The vagus nerve has many incredibly important jobs and the most important job that we're going to be talking about today is the vagus nerve's role in regulating your nervous system. So if you deal with stress, irritability, overwhelm, anxiety, if you deal with depression, if you have symptoms of bipolar disorder, if you have difficulties with stabilizing your blood sugar, if your blood pressure often goes up or drops. These are all signs that your vagus nerve may be involved. You may have heard of the vagus nerve when people talk about a vasovagal response. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? I'll tell you a story about me having a vasovagal response, and this was my first experience with the vagus nerve. And so I was in medical school and we were learning phlebotomy and my vagus nerve had a big reaction to this. So phlebotomy class is where you're learning to draw blood and do injections, and we had to practice on each other. And so I'm afraid of needles, my colleagues are all afraid of needles, and we're having to practice sticking needles into each other, and so you're sitting there scared of a needle, and the person is coming at you, and they have a needle in their hand, and it's shaking. And so very stressful response. And what ended up happening is that when I had blood coming out of my arm, my blood pressure crashed. I felt instantly sick to my stomach. I was covered in a cold sweat and I came incredibly close to passing out. And that's a vasovagal example. Your blood pressure drops, your vagus nerve kicks way in. You kind of go into that flop response. And so the number one thing you wanna do in moments like that is lay down and put your feet up. So if you've heard of a vasovagal response and if you've heard about something like that happening where if you think of needles or you see blood or if you pass out from too much heat, these are all things that your vagus nerve may regulate. And so 
That probably means that you've probably heard about the vagus nerve. And so the question is, is how does our vagus nerve impact our bodies and how does it impact your nervous system? There are four primary ways your vagus nerve regulates your nervous system. Number one is that it can do a nervous system reset. So if you feel like you're stuck in a panic loop, for example, I talked to a client yesterday and she was in a panic attack spiral. She felt like it was lasting an hour or more and she couldn't get out of it and she was trying all of the things from the panic pack that she made. She even tried taking Xanax, but her nervous system was just stuck in this fight flight. Her vagus nerve would have needed to do a reset, but if her vagus nerve wasn't on board with that, then she might have not responded, right? So your vagus nerve can create a nervous system reset. So if you're stuck in panic, if you're stuck in fight, flight, freeze, these are opportunities to get your vagus nerve on board, and I'll teach you how to do that today in this video and then in the blog, which we'll be publishing in a couple of weeks. So the vagus nerve, we know from the clinical literature that the vagus nerve can reset a nervous system. So if your nervous system is stuck in overdrive, it means you likely have an underactive vagus nerve because the vagus nerve is calming. The vagus nerve takes us out of fight, flight, freeze, that kind of frantic, high blood pressure, all of that fight, flight, freeze, stimulation and restlessness. It takes all of that and it brings it down into what we call a parasympathetic state. That's why when you have that vasovagal response, your vagus nerve kicks in, you feel like you're gonna pass out. That's in my story. My vagus nerve kicked in when I got really stressed about the blood coming out of my arm and I almost passed out, right? So your vagus nerve can do a nervous system reset. So that's number one of the four. So number two is that your vagus nerve is the route by which your gut and your brain communicate. So I actually didn't really know this in clear detail until studying this in a little bit more depth for our conversation today. I knew, and you may know, that we have a second brain in our gut, that we have the gut brain access. And we also know that most of the serotonin that's in your body, approximately 95% of the serotonin in your body is regulating and creating your actual mental emotional state. That 95% that of the serotonin is made in your gut. So what I didn't quite gather that I learned in this research that you might find fascinating is that the gut bacteria communicate with the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve communicates that information to your brain. Your vagus nerve is bi-directional, meaning the brain sends information down the vagus nerve to your heart, to your organs, even to the uterus and the fallopian tubes. It goes all the way down into your organs, into your body, and 80% of the signals are actually going from your gut, from your body, up the vagus nerve into your brain. So your gut is communicating directly to your brain with the vagus nerve. So if we just stop and think about this for a second, this has really huge implications because we all talk about the importance of diet and health, diet and brain health, less inflammation, usually less anxiety, less inflammation, less depression, less psychosis, better sleep, right? But the inflammation piece is just a part of the puzzle. The other piece is literally how and what your gut is communicating to your vagus nerve and then what your vagus nerve is causing to happen with your brain. So if you're stuck in a fight, flight, freeze, irritable, anxious, restless, overwhelmed, stressed state, it may be because that vagus nerve is communicating that kind of data to your brain coming from your gut. And so when we think about your gut, we wanna think about I'm making those neurotransmitters in my gut and they're literally directly going and communicating to your brain. So if you've ever had that gut feeling have you had that gut feeling where you just feel like that knowing in your gut? And oftentimes I feel that, right, loves? Like you get like that feeling of like anxiety or it like hits you in the gut. I have often wondered, what is that? Like when you feel that like, oh my gosh, so scary, right? Have you ever felt that? Like that jolt in your gut? That's the vagus nerve, which is so fascinating and so cool. So that's number two. We're talking about the four primary ways the vagus nerve interacts with your nervous system. So number one, do you remember what number one was? Yep. So number one is that it could do a vagus nerve reset. So it can reset your nervous system. 
Number two is that it literally is the communication highway between your gut and your brain. So that's really important. Number three is, I touched on it, number three is inflammation. Your vagus nerve is anti-inflammatory in nature. So you can eat an anti-inflammatory diet. You can take anti-inflammatory supplements. Medications in some senses can be anti-inflammatory like aspirin, some antidepressants, benzodiazepines, these can all be anti-inflammatory. But your most powerful anti-inflammatory support is your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve is an anti-inflammatory rock star and getting your vagus nerve on board will help to bring your inflammation down, which means less anxiety. It means better memory, better con uh, concentration. It means less depression. It means less of all of the things that we're working on recovering from, right? So reducing inflammation. So if you're doing just supplements and your vagus nerve is out of balance, these things are just going to be palliative. We want to get your vagus nerve back on track, which I'm going to teach you about in this video. So stay to the end. And then the fourth is your vagus nerve regulates your vitals. Your vitals are your blood pressure, your heart rate, it regulates your respiration. So when we're talking about the communication from the vagus nerve down from the brain stem into your heart, your vagus nerve, when it turns up and your vagus nerve is making you more relaxed, your heart rate slows down, your blood pressure goes down, your respiratory rate goes down, right? And so when we think about your cardiovascular health, it's very intimately related to your vagus nerve right? And so we can tell if your vagus nerve is activated or deactivated by looking at your blood pressure, your pulse, your respiratory rate. And remember, I told you the story about my blood draw, my blood pressure crashed, right? Because my vagus nerve was turned way up. It was overactivated, trying to protect me, sending me into a freeze, into a flop. And my blood pressure went way down. And that's why you want to put your feet above your head to keep that blood going to your brain. So those are the four ways that the, the four primary ways that your vagus nerve interacts with your nervous system. And so I wanna share with you 10 ways to know if your vagus nerve isn't working properly because it's all about root cause. That's what we do here. We help you to find the root cause of why you're feeling the way you feel. And it may be your vagus nerve. So we wanna get your vagus nerve back on track because if your symptoms are vagus nerve related and you do all of the other supplements, you spend tons of money on medications or you try to spend all sorts of time doing all these treatments that aren't targeting the vagus nerve, you're gonna get frustrated. Have you ever been there where you feel like you are doing all of the things but not getting the results that you need? So it's all about root cause. And so if the vagus nerve is part of your process, then we want to work on that. We want to heal that. So 10 signs. So I have them written down here. I don't want to miss a single one. So you're going to see my eyes looking behind the phone just a little bit to make sure that we get every single one of these 10. So number one is the vagus nerve innervates your voice box, your larynx. It helps moving your tongue. It helps with swallowing. So if you ever feel like I'm having a hard time swallowing or I like choke on water or food gets stuck, or if you feel like you have a lump in your throat, it could absolutely be related to your vagus nerve. If you have voice hoarseness, so if you feel like you have kind of raspy voice or it's hard to speak or you feel like your voice is changing, these could be an indication that your vagus nerve is out of balance. We have a question about insomnia. Is this an indication of a hyperactive vagus nerve? And it's actually the opposite, right? Because your vagus nerve will relax you. Your vagus nerve will help you go to sleep. And so that's actually one of the 10 is sleeping changes. And so if you're having a hard time falling asleep, staying asleep, if your sleep is out of balance, it could be that your vagus nerve is underactive, which makes sense, right? Because you're going to remember at the end of this video, vagus nerve is calm. And then when the vagus nerve isn't activated, then you're more stressed and your blood pressure's higher and it changes your blood sugars and all these things, right? So sleeping difficulties like insomnia, it would be a hypo or underactive vagus nerve. And then we talked about the hoarseness of the voice, the difficulty swallowing. And then another sign that your vagus nerve may be a culprit is irregular heartbeat. And so around this same time, I'm actually just putting this together as I'm talking with you right now, is at the time, this is so fascinating. At the time when I was having those vasovagal reactions to needles, 
we were also learning how to do hydrotherapy procedures on ourselves. Hydrotherapy is using water as medicine. And so we had to take our vitals before doing the procedure. And so I put in my stethoscope and I listened to my heart and you will never guess what I heard. I heard three heartbeats. Your heartbeat should be like lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, right? And I had three. It ended up being an S4 gallop, which is uh, it's typically caused by high stress, so the ventricles aren't contracting at the same rate, neither here nor there. But it's really interesting because the vagus nerve is involved in your heart rate. And so if your vagus nerve is overactive, you might struggle from low blood pressure and you may pass out really easily. You may be really tired. You may get dizzy standing up. If your vagus nerve is underactive, you might find that you have heart palpitations high blood pressure, racing heart, thumping, heaviness of the heart, right? So vagus nerve will interact with your heart and depending on if it's regularly giving you data or if you're getting spurts of data, you might find that your heart rate is irregular. And we see that in panic and stress, right? When we get anxious, our heart rate changes. So other things that are signs of the vagus nerve maybe being a culprit for you is if you have gastrointestinal upset. So literally, your vagus nerve goes to your gastrointestinal tract. We were talking about that, right? How it has a bilateral relay between your brain and your gut. If you have gut symptoms, it could be causing your vagus nerve to respond by making you depressed or anxious or overwhelmed, or it could be the opposite direction. Your vagus nerve communicates to your gut as well. We had Sean ask a question about being on a proton pump inhibitor, which is a medication used in reflux. And it could be that if you're taking medications like a PPI or even antidepressants, where there is a big interaction with the gut, that changing the gut can change your brain because the vagus nerve communication. So if you have issues with digestion, if you have reflux, gas, bloating, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. If you have a diagnosis of irritable bowel disease, it could actually be a vagus nerve issue or it could be exacerbating a vagus nerve issue. So it's another sign. Okay, fluctuations in blood sugar. Vagus nerve will change the way that your body is making blood sugar. Because if you're in fight, flight, freeze, your body's gonna need to release a bunch of glucose in your system so that your cells can eat it in order to help you run away, right? But if your blood sugar is crashing, like when you have a vasovagal response, or if you find that your blood sugars are spiking and dropping and spiking and dropping, it could be a vagus nerve issue. Of course, signs of vagus nerve issues would be emotional distress, anxiety, depression, irritability. If you have rage attacks and you feel so frustrated and you have outbursts, it could be your vagus nerve, right? And we talked about sleeping changes. And then interestingly, there's this whole philosophy that we could talk about in a future, uh, we could talk about in a future video is this whole philosophy called polyvagal theory. And so polyvagal theory in short was created by Dr. Porges. And he talked about how the vagus nerve is an important part of feeling connectedness with other people. Because when we're in that fight, flight, freeze, when our vagus nerve isn't joining the party, when we're stressed and our vagus nerve is really turned down, when we're in that fight, flight, freeze state, it's hard to connect intimately with other people. The vagus nerve is involved, according to polyvagal theory, the vagus nerve is involved in helping you relax so that you can be calm and present and have more intimate connections with other people. So if you feel like I have a lack of connectivity, a lack of intimacy, a lack of community, and you're just not feeling like you're connecting with other people, it could be the vagus nerve involvement. Okay, so in the last part of this video, we're gonna talk about what do we do about this? So let's say that as you're listening to this video, you're like, oh my gosh, yes, this is me, this is me, this is me, I have all of the things, what do I do? We're gonna talk about some solutions today. And then I'm also gonna make sure that I type these up, that they're in the blog so that you can have everything in writing. So make sure that you bookmark this video and that you bookmark our blog because we constantly have new information going up there for you. Also, 
I do have a freebie, it's called the Anxiety Springboard, and it actually involves solutions that are helpful to tonify your vagus nerve. And so check that out. You could just simply click on the link in the bio and I have free gifts for you. So get the Springboard because that's gonna be a beautiful book, a quick little booklet that will just give you some of my top solutions in addition to the cool content that we're getting today. So make sure that you find that. That's just simply in the link in the bio. It's free gifts. And of course the blog is in there. We have so much content at the website, you people, and that <laughs> it's so hard to find it, right? So get on the website and there's a little mic, a little um, magnifying glass in the top, a little search bar, and you could just start looking for keywords and finding all sorts of topics that we talk about. So in two weeks when the Vegas blog is up, you could just go in there and type Vegas, V-A-G-U-S, and you'll find it. Okay, so we wanna deal with and heal the vagus nerve, right? So how can we get your vagus nerve back on track? So remember, more vagus equals more relaxation, but too much vagus can mean a vasovagal response where you're too relaxed, you could pass out, you know, things like that. So it's all about balance. And that's vagal tone. So think of vagal tone in a similar way as like muscle tone, right? So you want to have nice, strong tone muscles, but you don't want them to be like rock solid. Well, maybe you do, but you don't want them to be so rock hard because too much is, you know, too much of a good thing. And so think of the vagus nerve is that, right? And so with vagal tone, we know more vagal tone equals more capacity to regulate stress more vagal tone is more capacity to regulate stress. More vagal tone means more relaxation. It means overall better health. More vagal tone means less of a risk of heart disease, less of a risk of stroke, better blood sugar, better mood stability, better emotional resiliency. What emotional resiliency means is that when stressful things happen is that you'll deal with it better, right? More emotional stability. You will have better energy, less brain fog. Like literally everything is better. Your inflammation will be better by having better vagal tone, like less chronic disease. Your vagus nerve is so important and so cool. So before I tell you how to increase vagus health, we want to teach you how to measure vagal tone. So if you're wondering, well, what is my vagal tone? And so you could do a really quick exercise if you're comfortable feeling your own pulse, if you can find your own pulse, I'm gonna teach you how to measure your vagal tone right now. Okay, put your hand up, find your thumb. Okay, is everyone found their thumb? Okay, put your hand up, and then I want you to follow the inside of your thumb down to the inside of your wrist, and you have this bone on the inside of your wrist, and you're just gonna follow it right in there. So you should find a dent. So you have a pulse here. So you gotta practice finding your pulse. So use your fingers, not your thumb, because your thumb has its own pulse. So find your fingers. And then what you're gonna do for me is you're gonna breathe in. And as you breathe in, I want you to notice what happens. Just breathe in and hold. And then I want you to breathe out slowly. Okay, what did you notice? Did you find your pulse? So you're gonna breathe in and notice what happens and then breathe out slowly. Okay. What should happen if you have good, healthy vagal tone is as you inhale, your pulse will speed up. You'll notice that beating underneath the pads of your fingers will get a little faster. And as you exhale, it should slow down a little bit. Because as we exhale, as you bear down, it's something called Valsalva. It's where you bear down. As you exhale and elongate the exhale, your heart rate should slow down. So, more vagal tone means that your heart rate is more stretchy. Your vagus makes your heart rate nice and stretchy. So as you exhale, if you have good vagal tone, you should see that slowing down. And as you inhale, speeding up a little bit, slowing down, speeding up. We measure this as heart rate variability. Your heart rate should actually be fairly variable. Your vagus should be able to relax your heart rate with simply an exhale right? And you've heard about this, right? They tell you just breathe. And then you're like, I don't need to be told to breathe. I breathe all the time. But you can actually feel the breath working by feeling your pulse. If that feels really creepy to you, I could tell you my husband does not like to feel his pulse. He does not like to think that he has a pulse. He doesn't want me to feel his pulse. So if that feels weird for you, 
that's okay, just take my word for it. So what you could also do is you could hook yourself up to a little biofeedback device. They have them on phone apps, like these things are so amazing. I love to use HeartMath, heartmath.com. I don't have any affiliation with them, but they're really great. They have wearable devices that will teach you about heart rate variability, right? So that's how I want you to measure vagal tone. So the goal is that it speeds up and slows down as opposed to staying the same no matter what your breath is, more vagal tone. So you can practice that, okay? So that's your homework number one. And then number two, I'm gonna teach you how to stimulate your vagus nerve. So if you're in fight, flight, freeze, stress, overwhelm, high blood pressure, heart palpitating, gastrointestinal upset, if you're having all of these different symptoms, we wanna get your vagus nerve on board. And I have a ton of tips for you. Are you ready? And these are all research based. Like I can give you all of the research. This stuff is coming out of PubMed articles. Like this is legit. You're going to love it. So number one is I want you to do four count breathing. We just talked about how to measure if that's helping with your vagal tone. We want to have you breathe in for four counts. So do it with me. Hold at the top for four counts and then breathe out for four counts. Hold at the bottom for four counts. Okay, to supercharge the vagus impact is actually breathing through your diaphragm. And I have a trick to teach you how to make sure that you're breathing into your diaphragm, is lay down on your back. And <laughs> I used to study to be an opera singer and my vocal coach taught me this like 20 years ago. So you lay down on your back and put some books on your abdomen. Okay, so lay down on your back, put some books on your abdomen, and then you're gonna breathe in for four counts and you should be able to press out your abdomen and watch those books rise as you inhale. And then as you exhale, again, that's stimulating the vagus nerve, moving the diaphragm will stimulate your vagus nerve. And as you exhale, those books should go back down to the ground towards your spine. And so do the four count square of breath, if you can, laying down with the books on your tummy to remind you to get to your abdomen. If you're on the go and you can't lay on the floor and put books on your tummy, just simply place your hand on your abdomen. Your diaphragm is just under your rib cage and you can just place it right there at your solar plexus. Okay, number two, how do we affect the vagus nerve? Turn your vagus nerve on. So if you're having a panic attack, we've learned from the DBT research of Marsha Linehan that the cold water applied around your eyes can help evoke something called a dive reflex. This stimulates your vagus nerve to decrease your blood pressure and decrease panic, to decrease anxiety quite quickly. I teach you in other videos how to make a panic pack and how to use a panic pack. So just go to the link in the bio, click the button that says blog and do a search in there for panic pack and you can learn how to do that. So cold water in the face or you can use those chemical packs where you just break them and they get cold and then place that about 15 to 30 seconds and then take a break and then try it again while doing the breath. Okay. Another option for stimulating your vagus nerve directly is through essential oils. Now, the vagus nerve we learned about starts in your brainstem, right? And then it travels in a meandering path. It's the longest nerve in your body. It travels a meandering path down and it comes closest to the surface in the bowl of your ear. Okay, so this is your ear, right? And the bowl is, if you imagine pouring water and it just collects right here where my finger's pointing. This is the bowl of your ear. So we don't want to put any oils in your ear. That could be very bad. Don't ever put oils in your ear, but right here on the skin in the bowl of your ear. And so you want to use oils right here and that can absorb into the brainstem or uh, into the vagus nerve. And I actually have a blog with some research articles actually proving the efficacy of this, especially using lavender. I like to mix lavender with a little bit of citrus, or you can put in a little bit of clove, but be careful using really caustic oils in case they feel like they're too spicy or they burn. You might mix it with a carrier oil, like olive oil or coconut or jojoba, but putting a little bit of essential oil in the bowls of your ears can stimulate your vagus nerve and help bring down panic. Okay, so that's using essential oils. And then you can also, interestingly, hum. So have you guys heard of the ohm where people just hum and they go, um, 
right? Remember we were talking about earlier in the video that the vagus nerve stimulates your larynx, your vocal cords. Signs of vagus nerve imbalance is hoarseness of voice, difficulty speaking, and so we know that humming can help tonify your vagus nerve. And so there's a lot of wisdom to these age-old traditions of humming, doing the mantras. In a lot of Indian or Hindu culture, there's lots of singing and humming of different mantras. There's a lot of wisdom in that. And so interesting, my anxiety, my story, is that when I was studying vocal performance, my anxiety was a lot better. Maybe it's because I like singing or it was less stressful or whatever it was. But I really think that part of it is that I didn't know that I was working on my vagus nerve tone, but I was. I was humming and singing, doing scales. And so if you're feeling more stressed or anxious, get in your car, get in your shower, get on the stage, hum, sing, do a mantra. Okay. Um, the Valsalva maneuver is a quick way to activate your vagus nerve. Valsalva is where you hold your breath and you bear down, like you're going to the bathroom or trying to have a bowel movement. You just clench and you bear everything down and this activates the vagus nerve. So the Valsalva maneuver. Interestingly, people who have issues with vagus nerves sometimes will pass out on the toilet when going to the bathroom or trying to go to the bathroom because if their vagal tone is already so much that their blood pressure is low when they try to go to the bathroom, it can go so low that they pass out. If you're having the opposite and your vagus nerve is underactive, bearing down and doing the Vesalva maneuver can actually help stop stress and stop panic. Okay, couple of other things. Gargling can be great as long as you don't choke, right? So be careful, like if you're having a hard time swallowing and you don't have that larynx control, if you don't have that, then don't do it. But otherwise, I love to use Happy Sleepy Powder and I love to use Kava Kava and gargling it can be really activating for the vagus nerve and it can also, the constituents in the solution can help stop stress, okay. So the other thing is laughing, spending time in nature. The act of prosody, speaking slowly, rhythmically, that can help, yoga can help. Um, we talked about, I'm just looking to make sure I'm not missing anything, and then healing your gut. So somebody asked a question earlier about using probiotics. Yeah, working with your vagus nerve and doing that by healing your gut can be really important. But not all probiotics are the same, right? And so we wanna make sure that you're looking at your gut health and getting information as to what's out of balance. With my clients and my consultees, I do stool testing, and stool testing will tell us exactly what's in your gut, what's going on. Do you have too much of this particular bacteria, or do you not have enough of this other bug, and how can we make your gut healthier to begin with, right? So individualize it. Okay, so today, this has been a long one, but I'm hoping that you got a lot out of it. We've been talking about the vagus nerve. I'm Dr. Nicole, and we are all about helping you find root cause solutions to get your life back. And I'm so glad that you have been on this live today. We talked about what the vagus nerve is, what does it do, how does it stop stress, what are signs that your vagus nerve isn't working properly, and then what you can actually do to get your vagus nerve back on track. I taught you a little cheat to assess your vagus nerve tone. And then we of course talked about strategies that really work and can work quickly. I'm gonna get this all put up in a blog. And so be sure to keep an eye out for that in the next couple of weeks. And then make sure that you get the wellness springboard. There's vagus nerve goodness in there. And I think you're going to really like it. It's free. Just click on the link in the bio and look at the button that says free gifts. And then be sure to tell us what other topics would be fun for you to learn about. If you have questions, me and my team love to answer every single message and every single question that we get asked to the best of our abilities. And so simply just pop us over a message and we'll do our very best to make sure that you get sent in the direction that you need. Thank you so much for being here. And if there are other topics, pop them over and also, if you haven't seen, we are doing a complete redesign of my website and it's so fun. So go and check that out and tell us what you think. We have new pictures, the Cavapoo is on there. And if we're missing anything, we'd love your feedback. Awesome. You guys are amazing. I love you. I honor you. You can get your life back. Thank you for listening. See you guys later.